Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Yes, I'm back with a movie review. Now that we're in September, after having a long, winding, cruel summer this year, you know, thanks to this COVID-19 pandemic, which ruins everything, but I really hope it dies. I mean, I know, my only hope for that. But therefore, since we now have the release of Bill and Ted Face the Music, the third installment, of the the first two original films which I'm definitely going to plan on reviewing right now is well <laughs> here it is Bill and Ted's most excellent collection blu-ray set that I picked up back in 2016 at Best Buy part of the shelf select yes Yes, and you can see right in the back, too, what they have in store. With t tons of great features here. Well, maybe not that ton, but just as much as we can. But yeah, just definitely looks incredibly excellent. We get two films, both Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Yeah, here you get like a flyer. <laughs> There's also uh, the action figures. Yeah, you have to order it to get it. Uh, <laughs> the Wild Stylings uh, pick. Okay, hold on. And two stickers uh, for two movies. Yep, there's one for Bill and Ted Excellent Adventure. And the other one for Bill and Ted Bogus Journey. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm trying to put everything back to its place. Yeah. Oh, looks awesome though. <laughs> um so yeah, you got the movie, the first film. Right there. And got bonus journey to join with the special features included. Okay. And uh gotta take out the uh the reversible cover art. Yeah, one for that's an adventure and the other one for focus journey. Yeah, you can see uh Death right there, played by William Sadler, and you see the rest of the historical figures, even George Carlin. <laughs> yeah, really cool. Oh, this looks awesome. I also got the DVD as well, and I picked this up back in 2012 at Target, even though I did got the sequel. Uh, I did used to have the VHS tape of the first movie, but I sold it. It's okay. Um, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, you can see on the back right here, it's a double feature set. Um, but of course, uh, the second movie, I ended up getting it at Pizza Hut originally. So I still collected them. Yeah, remember when Pizza Hut had uh, four movies that they were selling back in 2003? You know, when you ordered some nice fresh uh, pizza of your choice of toppings or like like if you're getting like a good deal. Yeah, it comes with four MGM films. Uh, one is um, Holly Honeymoon in Vegas, which I have already on DVD. Uh, Mr. Mom, which I also have one too. Um, but I got a Pizza Hut still. This movie. And all dogs go to heaven too. But they could have had some, a couple more movies and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, still have the coupons, <laughs> but you can't use them anymore. Yeah, and there's the advertisement for Agent Quoting Banks, but it does have advertisements for other MGM titles. You know, most of which are on Blu-ray. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can see this for Focus Journey. Yeah. 
Okay. Just putting it back to the way it was. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of difficult to, to keep on going. Um, but I saved them exactly how it should be. Yeah, so you can see No Ted's Excellent Adventure DVD from MGM. And then you can see Bogus Journey. Okay. Just showing you my Blu-rays and DVDs collection of the movie. I wish I can get the soundtrack though, but I guess I have to order it online if I have to. Um, okay. Now getting to the story, which I'm going to start with the review of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, which came out in 1989, even though it was made in 1988. Uh, it was supposed to be released that year, but they they had to have another distributor to take over so they could release it in 89. Yeah, and that original distributor was uh, DEG, De Laurentiis Entertainment Group, but since the company was going under, yes, it's Neil you know, De Laurentiis' um, production company and film studio, um, joining in with um, his daughter, Rafaela De Laurentiis. Um, well, what happened was, though, was originally started out as um, as a comedy stand-up routine that both Chris Madison and Ed Solomon had created. So they were coming up with their own flesh material for their screenplay. And Stephen Herrick, who directed this movie, um, he, he he saw this, he read the script, and he. He found it to be incredibly laugh out loud that the off-center humor would target it to a Pacific audience, you know, for younger groups. So at that point on, they weren't so sure if this is either going to be a hit or a flop. But of course, it is a time-traveling movie that's pretty much like Back to the Future. I mean, I know there have been a lot of time-traveling films, and I'm a sucker for that. But it, it really works. So that alone had turned into a movie, which the original title was going to be called Bill and Ted's Time Van, which that means kind of like in Back to the Future where they had the DeLorean. Well, why not just use a band? Or did that ray would be, I think, the Wild Stylings kind of band <laughs> that they use? Because after all, both Bill and Ted formed their own band. Unfortunately, though, they were going to give it to Warner Brothers, hoping they'd be uh, interested in the project. But... Sadly, they couldn't, and I know the original idea was they were going to get other historical figures, uh, like, for example, Adolf Hitler. Like, I never thought they would get that, or, or Julius Caesar. And the band was going to be a 1969 Chevrolet. And they were also going to get other uh, characters like um, Sean Manale, and Babe Ruth, among others. Uh, but it didn't work that way, so it had to be rewritten. And they had to give it to DG, and they accepted it. But then, after they went under, they gave it to another distributor, and that turned out to be Orion Pictures, and being co produced with um, Nelson Entertainment, because half of the the staff were from DEG. They worked for Nelson by very spiking. Um, at that point on, uh, this was at the time when Orion was now having uh, deals with uh, Nelson Films along with uh, Columbia Pictures. Yeah, it's now Polygram owns the rights too through MGM. <laughs> Yeah, because MGM bought uh, the pre-1996 uh, Polygram Library. Um, so yeah, the movie came out on February 17, 1989, and it was a surprise hit. Uh, people love it. Um, it made uh, $40.5 million out of a $6.5 million budget. Yeah, it's a very small budget for a movie like this. Uh, considering the, the effects and the casting and, and the location that it looks, I mean, it still looks as impressive as it could be. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it's basically what the story is simple. It's about, as I mentioned already, you know, two uh, San Dimas uh, Dinwiddie teenagers, both Bill and Ted, both played by um, Alex Winter and Keanu Reeves. Uh, they're about to sign for a history report in order for them to pass the history class because they've been flunking lately, mostly concentrating on their band called the Wild Stylings. Yeah. So they got a help from a time traveling the citizen named Rufus, who's played by George Carlin, to actually help him. You know, take all these historical figures, as we all know, you know, such as Abraham Lipkin, Joan of Arc, Napoleon, Beethoven, Sigmund Freud, Billy the Kid, <laughs> and Genghis Khan. But at this point on, they're going to have their wild, excellent adventure riding around in a time-traveling phone booth straight into the circuits of time yeah. going through like certain periods of um, locations around and of course you get those two medieval babes you know the princesses Elizabeth and Joanna <laughs> yeah okay so let's begin with the review it stars Keanu Reeves Alex Winter, which I know he was from The Lost Boys, George Carlin, the comedian, who always been best known for doing his uh, stand-up routine, especially the seven words, you know, all these dirty words that he comes up with and everything. And then he went on to play Mr. Conductor after Ringo Starr. Uh, Terry Camilleri, Dan Show, Tony Steedman. Rod Loomis, Jane Wilden, yes, for those who don't know, she was from the band The Go-Go's, yep, um, Robert B. Barron, Clifford David, Hal Landon Jr., Bernie Casey, Amy Stock Fullerton, J. Patrick Manera, Fraser Bain, John Carson, Diane Franklin, Kimberly LaBelle, joining in with Clarence Clemens, Mar Martha Davis, and Free Way Bill. It's written by Chris Mafferson and Ed Solomon, and it's directed by Stephen Herrick, who went on to direct uh, the Mighty Ducks, the original Mighty Ducks, and also directed the Free Musketeers, the Disney version. Um, I'm on several letters that he's done. The movie began set in San Dimas, California, which is now being served as a utopian society that humanity does exist in 2688, um, which is becoming the inspiration of music and philosophy of the two great ones, who were, of course, the two dim-witted uh, teenagers from high school named Bill S. Preston Esquire, played by Alex Winter, and Ted Theodore Logan, played by Keanu Reeves. And one of the leaders, at this rate, joined in with the three most important people in the world. Yeah, all three of them played by Clarence Clemens, Arthur Davis, and Free Wade Bill. Um, we join in with Rufus, who's played by George Carlin, to travel back in time to 1988, San Dimas which is the 20th century, by using a time machine that has an antenna on top as a phone booth to ensure that they'll be able to find a younger Bill and Ted so they can successfully pass their history class since they've been flunking and failing most of the time, just concentrating on their band, the Wild Stylings. And if they do fail, Ted's father, Police Captain Logan, who is played by Hal Landon Jr., is going to send him into um, military school in Alaska. 
or yeah, with this military academy, which is going to be able to end both their friendship and their band together. Not to mention, they're going to be altering history. So Rufus found uh, both Bill and Ted somewhere at the Circle K. Which at this point on, they were about to ask one of the customers if they know everything about history. But Rufus, of course, helps them out, bringing them, of course, another phone booth, which actually has both Bill and Ted from the future. But they suddenly came in from the present, and you can already see all the historical figures joining around. <laughs> which I know. It's right in the middle of the, the story. And by the way, I do have a Circle K in my location that's next to a uh, mobile gas station. Well, it's part of it, though. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, they had to have several hours um, because they had to be able to work on the report by tomorrow, otherwise it'll be too late. So that, yes, they, did. they had to have Ted sync up his watch, and that way, you know, he'd be able to travel back in time. But first, uh, they had to try out the test by going inside the phone booth, you know, with Rufus, uh, to going all the way to France, where they meet uh, Napoleon Bontapate, who was played by Terry Camilleri. Um, yes, so they traveled to 1805, which it was during in the middle of a war against Austria. So as Rufus and Bill and Ted departed back to the present, Napoleon suddenly got thrown by a cannibal bomb that had an explosion and winds up <laughs> hanging around into the phone booth which at that point on was going straight into the circuits of time. Yes, because you know, once they were on the phone booth, yes, you get to see exactly a time loop going straight into the circuits of, t the circuits of time through the phone booth. And it got some pretty impressive uh, primitive CGI back then too. So, which I know nowadays you know, things have changed, but at the time, for this budget, yeah, they really had incredibly primitive uh, special effects because it was shot on a green screen or perhaps blue screen to create that effect, and it has all that flashing through the phone booth as you can see them. Um, so very awesome to to take a moment. So now Rufus had decided to take a moment to explain that time will continue to progressively normally for them as they cannot miss their class presentation right away. So he departs and only left them another um, phone booth, but or basically it's the same one, so that way you know they'll be able to use it whenever they can. Uh, Ted, on the other hand, decided to leave Napoleon, because he's already been knocked unconscious, to his brother Deacon, who's uh, played by uh, it's, um, it was played by Fraser Bain, so that way, you know, they'll be able to hang around with Deacon's friends, you know, take uh, Napoleon to a local uh, ice cream parlor, where he gets to eat all of the ice cream, join in with the kids, and be able to win a prize, or at this rate, a badge, and then later they'll take him for bowling, which apparently... <laughs> He kind of sucked at bowling, or he almost tried to made it. But yeah, I remember that scene where when he tried to make that uh, particular shot of uh, bowling, <laughs> he keeps missing and he keeps saying in French, shit, 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 <laughs> before he got kicked out. Yeah. Um, so he's all alone. Therefore, um, both Bill and Ted were using the phone booth, time traveling all the way through the circuits of time. And they actually made it 
to this particular period where they actually be friends with Billy the Kid. You know, during the Old West. Yeah, that got, they got into a bar fight. <laughs> they even got some beer, and they didn't get carded either. <laughs> so now, uh, and then they, even though they got involved in a fight, which they basically just sit down, <laughs> just watching them fighting before they end up getting involved, and, and they want to push them straight into the wall, and that's where they spotted those uh, Western babes. <laughs> okay. And then... Um, after that, um, yeah, they continue to go on their journey, so they stop at 50th century England, where they suddenly become infatuated and falling in love with these two princesses, Elizabeth and Joanna, and they're both played by Kimberly, yeah, Kimberly LaBelle and Diane Franklin. Okay, I know, it's, I'm trying to keep up. But they unfortunately got into bigger trouble. I mean, they were disguised as the knights, you know, just going around, playing around, until at first they thought Ted was getting stabbed by by these uh, bad guys and all. Call them Dick Reeds, and they're about to go after them. And then, but somehow Ted actually survived. He just got out of the suit really quickly. <laughs> so now. Um, they're being sent to to be executed. Bogus. <laughs> and they um, wound up being saved by both Billy the Kid and Socrates. Or Socrates, as they refer to. <laughs> so now they just continue to go on. Just going to find some more historical figures, such as Sigmund Freud, Ludwig Ben. Beethoven, Genghis Khan, Joan of Arc, and Abraham Lincoln. But then, after a brief start in the prehistoric times of 1 million BC or 1 million AC in San Dimas, um, they all had to put together by having some chocolate pudding. And some gum. Yeah, I'm sorry. The air conditioner turned on. I think I'll turn it back on again. Whatever. Sorry. Yeah, it gets a little loud too, but you get the idea. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, they're about to have chocolate pudding. And then they also had um, some chewing gum. So that way they could put the antenna back together again since it fell off. And now they had to continue on their journey right away only to find out that uh, since we're already in this particular day that they had to be able to get there on time to do their presentation but unfortunately since Deacon had ditched uh, Napoleon now they have to try to trace back to steps to actually find out where Napoleon is at and that turns out to be the water loop at a local um, water park, which at this rate was Raging Waters. Yeah. So, they, so then you see uh, Napoleon just riding around in the water loop, and he keeps on going and going and going. <laughs> he was like having fun until he got picked up by Bill and Ted. And as they continue to go around, well, they did left. Uh, their historical figures, you know, just to have um, some uh, ICs, yeah, ICs, and before they end up going into bigger trouble, like Genghis Khan wants up at a local sporting goods store, you know, just taking out a bat and bashing the the hell out of uh, that mannequin, you know, just <laughs> smash the head and, and, and the head of the mannequin wants up. <laughs> on the basketball hoop and just kept on going before getting caught by these two mall security guards. Um, Abraham Lincoln's just taking a photograph but refused to pay. Um, Beethoven is just playing the keyboards at, at the music shop. Uh, both um, Bill the Kid and, and Socrates were about to uh, be able to meet these uh, gorgeous uh, mall babes 
before Sigmund Freud uh, ruined it all. But of course, they all got caught. Joan of Arc, on the other hand, was getting ready for a, work, a workout, <laughs> so he just knocked the uh, the female fitness instructor out of the way. So he, she continues, and then they all all these mall securities are getting up on them, chasing them around the entire mall, including the hockey wink, and the, they got them all arrested. Where uh, <laughs> Captain Logan is at. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, uh, yes, um, Bill's um, mom, you know, Missy, who's uh, played by uh, uh, Amy Stock Pollington, yes, um, Bill's stepmother, actually, who's a babe, <laughs> actually helps him out. And, yeah, I, I know, Ted's always, like, uh, questioning uh, Bill because he's always... Uh, basically <laughs> flirting with her and Ted's like saying dude it's your mom and he, and he just keeps saying shut up Ted <laughs> okay so now um, already since Ted's already getting into bigger trouble he's already being signed up for the military uh, academy in Alaska uh, Ted just Join in with Bill to trying to find a way because now they have to play time games of their own to find out where Dad's keys are. He found it underneath it all, so that way they'll try to find a way to sneak down and and try to get all the historical figure, figures out of jail <laughs> um, before getting caught by uh, Logan. There's a disc ray place in a tape recorder underneath it at all and and then later just place in a, <laughs> a a trash can to escape. And um, now they were on their way to to San Dimas High School so now they could finally perform their presentation. And it became a success. Because they almost failed too. But now they finally got an A, they finally passed the history class, but at this point on, they were just hoping that there is something different. Now that Rufus finally came back to congratulate them on passing, plus they even brought in, as they promised, the princesses, which are going to be preparing for their engagements. So yes, they're going to get married someday. And also, because they're going to play better, they ex uh, Rufus actually brought in some two new guitars. And yes, they're going to be better. <laughs> to start their own band of Wild Stylings. Yeah. No doubt about it, it's Bordacious. Most excellent movie ever made, without a doubt. I mean, both uh, Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter definitely nailed it together. They both had terrific chemistry, and it really shows. You know, I love these guys, and I love uh, Rufus, uh, and that George Carlin had definitely portrayed. I mean, even though you know he was he was there to help them, which is cool. I mean, at times you thought maybe they're going to start saying, well, <laughs> maybe some cuss words, but. But keep it in that level of, of PG rated. That wasn't the case. Because he did come clean. Um, so excellent performance right there. Uh, joining in with the entire cast. I mean they all did a, a, an incredible, non, incredible, awesome, great time portraying those characters exactly how they are. Um, and the way they, they're just going around, you know, exploring the mall and doing all this other stuff, you know, from their period. I mean, they they really um, they really established it very well. I mean, it's amazing because they look like they were indeed fish out of water, uh, the way they play those characters. <laughs> but it's really cool. Um, 
a very arousing story. I mean, it, think about it. I mean, a movie like this would have never gotten made, but I think in the way of other 80s films at the time, this really works. I mean, if Back to the Future can be such a huge success, then why not uh, Bill and Ted? And it did. I mean, it it uh, made up to 40.5 million, and and it actually uh, wins for uh, home video sales too. Yeah, in fact, um, I I actually rented this movie uh, when I was a kid. Uh, my dad rented it actually, and we we all saw the movie together and we loved it. Because I think we had seen it in theaters, I'm not so sure, but at that point on, we did saw it on home video, and we loved it. It was just fun. But I know I have seen the sequel, Bogus Journey, um, in theaters, and I had a great time as well. But before that, I'm um, th This movie never gets old. I mean, it, you know, it had a lot of heart and soul and spirit. It's just amazing. Um, the jokes in the movie, I mean, you can tell they're all radical, they're all dudes, they always come up with some crazy lines, like, um, yeah, because <laughs> we all know how dim-witted they are, they're not exactly as smart as they could be until, until they figure it out on their own. Uh, <laughs> like, for example, when they had to take the history class, I mean, Ted doesn't even know who Joan of Arc is, just says Noah's wife, and then the way they pronounce uh, Socrates as Socrates. Yeah, I know. <laughs> or the fact that um, they pretty much get everything wrong. Because <laughs> they mostly have to focus on the van in the garage they have to practice. And also because, you know, there was a uh, a lot of great scenes together too. Knowing that they're just having a good time. <laughs> or, but anyway. Um, but yeah, um, damn, it's just, it's hard to explain, but it's all there. I mean, and it's, it has this very smart script. I mean, you could tell that Chris and Ed just worked so hard on it. I mean, they're basically the real Bill and Ted right there. And the way they performed it, too, that, yes, it really worked. Um, uh, interesting enough, I heard that originally they were going to get Polly Shore to play Ted, while Brendan Fraser, which, yes, he was an upcoming actor at the time, was going to play Bill. I find this interesting because they went on to do Encino Man, where Fraser played uh, the caveman, and Paul Shore just plays the uh, the stoner friend of John Aston's character. So, yeah. The, also, there was going to be River Phoenix and Sean Penn, but they went ahead with Reeves and and Winter, and of course the air guitar. <laughs> And all that. <laughs> and I also heard that, because um, they had to mention Eddie Van Halen, yeah, they, they said they wanted to get him. I, I find it interesting that he was going to be able to play Rufus, but, but they went ahead with Carlin, even though they were also going to bring in Ringo Starr, which is kind of ironic, though, because I know both Starr and, and Carlin went on to play Mr. Conductor on Shining Time Station. And they were also going to get other stars like, you wouldn't believe it, Sean Connery, uh, Roger Daltre, and yes, even Charlie Sheen. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they also got um, some other actors who eventually all came from their bands, you know, like, you know, they got... Uh, ZZ Top, uh, E Street Band, The Tubes, and The Motels joining in to portray the parts. Um, it has a very awesome soundtrack, by the way. Um, boy, it does have an awesome soundtrack, all right? I mean, some great music here, like, um, for example, uh, Break Away, which was at the opening of the film by Big Pig. Yeah, that's the band, uh, which actually opens with this... Uh, this 
a, a ship that looks like a, a ring pop. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And um, the, the song called In Time, which a very beautiful song when both uh, Bill and Ted had met uh, those guys around. And um, uh, a lot of awesome songs like Play With Me by Extreme. Um, Not So Far Away by Glenn Burnick. Two Heads Are Better Than One by Power Tool. Yeah, I mean, awesome songs. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and yes, they even have the video games uh, from LJN. You know, all released by NES, Game Boy, PC, and all. Yes, the games suck. I get it. <laughs> I watched AVGN's video review. But hey, that's what we get. <laughs> Hello. But hey, it's fun what we lasted. And the movie is very funny. Uh, in fact, it's hilarious. And I could definitely see why. It's, it's definitely hysterical. Smartly written here. I mean, I couldn't stop laughing, too, <laughs> through those scenes. That's why I love it. Yeah. Hey, I mean, and also, because Bill and Ted's uh, is an inspiration to uh, Beavis and Butthead, or basically Ed from Good Burger. You know, the counter guy who, who sometimes could join in with Dexter for the movie version. I felt like, yeah, they were going for that. But then, you know, you do have a lot of copycats joining in, like, for example, Meet the Deedles. But, no thanks. So. And I know one time they did find out that originally, uh, you want to believe this, but a movie called Biodome with Pauly Shore and Stephen Baldwin was actually going to be a sequel a third installment of the Bill and Ted movies, which I know MGM released the movie because I know Orion was already going for bankruptcy problems, and it's kind of ironic though because Orion would be bought by MGM. Uh, yeah, if this was like Bill and Ted, you know, stuck in the ozone layer, then then I, I think it's going to be pretty boring, just like Biodome was. You know, going for that nature of being, or whatever. I'm glad that never happened, because they went for a different script. With Face the Music. Historical quotes that you hear in the film, such as, Bogus! Excellent! No way! Yes way! <laughs> Among others. And of course, all these quotes. Like, for example, um, when they were over there, during the um, ancient history in England, yeah, they were at knights, and then they're attacking all these other, um, well, all, all these other knights men around. The evil duke came and, and says, put him in the Iron Maiden. And Ted says, Iron Maiden? Excellent! Daring! Yeah, both of them said it. And then evil duke says, execute them. And both says, yeah, both Bill and Ted just says, bogus. <laughs> and um, also the moments too when, when of course you have Bill's stepmom, uh, Missy. Like when Missy arrives, you know, just all oh, um, perkish and, and hot, sexy. Just goes around saying, hi Bill, want a ride? <laughs> um, yeah, just running around too, it says, and Bill just says, sure, Missy. And she draws a blank stare at Bill, and <laughs> Bill's like, pretty much flirting with fantasies, saying, I mean, Mom. And Ted just whispers to Bill, your stepmom's cute. Shut up, Ted. Remember when she was a senior, and we were a freshman? Shut up, Ted. Now your dad's going for it in your own room. Shut up, Ted. Your stepmom is cute, though. Shut up, Ted. Remember I asked her to the prom? Shut up, Ted. 
Oh boy. And um, they also are trying to study for again the history so they can go for the preparation for their presentation. Because yeah, you could tell that they were pretty dumb at this point. Like when Bill was asking on their history report. Okay, Ted, George Washington, one, the father of our, our country. Ted says, two, born on President Day. Bill says, three, the dollar bill guy. Ted says, Bill, have you made a mushroom out of his head? It's like, just like, Ted, Alaska. Okay, uh, had wooden teeth. Chase Moby Dick. That's Captain... A hob dude, or whatever. Ah, uh, there's like so many quotes that you can pretty much talk about that you'll n never get tired of. <laughs> or even the moments too where, you know, when they try to grab all the historical figures. Of course, you know. I I kind of like the that part too where they when they try to. Gav uh, Genghis Khan, you know, they actually gave him a Twinkie and and have him to follow around <laughs> into the phone booth. You know. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. It, it just goes on. I guess you could pretty much say more about it, though, because... It's, it's a classic. I mean, you can't go wrong with uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I mean, the movie led to its success to actually become a franchise. They actually had an animated cartoon that aired on CBS, which had both Reeves and Winter, and I think Harlan, reprising their roles in animated form before they had a second season that was done for Fox Kids. Yeah, for Fox. And um, they actually had a breakfast cereal from Waltston's Arena. Yeah, because <laughs> I know every popular film that comes out during the summer or any other, well, season, they always have to come up with breakfast cereals. Um, and yeah, they, they even had um, a live action short lived TV series uh, to air on Fox, um, which is not as good as the movies, but hey, I can understand. Um, but I enjoy them, too. And that's why uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, as well as all the Bill and Ted uh, franchises, are one of my favorites, too. So it can't go wrong. I mean, time traveling has always been my favorite uh, subject for, for movies. Always a sucker for it. And just have fun with the film. It's just exactly, no matter what happens, no matter what you do, what, what can you do to change and alter the history, you know, with quantum realms or all this other time paradoxes, Deus Ex Machina and all that, um, you're just going to have a, a courageous, uh, most awesome, excellent adventure of all time so okay <laughs> unless you got to go around hanging around at the convenience store circle k <laughs> for those first busters and stuff <laughs> okay so that's bill and ted's excellent adventure and i give it five stars i'm joseph a sabora and be excellent to each other and party on, dudes! Later. <laughs>